It's 60 degrees outside, the sun is shining, the tank is clean, and I am feeling fantastic. Laugh out loud, love a lot. And shop for what makes you happy. Hey guys, Mandy here with Laugh Love Shop, and I, like pretty much everyone else in America, have been inspired to tidy up. That's right, I also binge watched Tidying Up by Marie Kondo, just like everyone else here on YouTube. But unlike everyone else here on YouTube, I actually have read two of her books. The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up was the first one that she wrote, and then Spark Joy is sort of a guidebook and I will get more into details about these in just a minute. But I do wanna to talk to you about the pros and cons of each book and the TV series. So let's get started. First, I wanna to talk to you guys about what the KonMari method is not. The KonMari method is not about getting down to a certain number of items. The KonMari method is not about what to get rid of, but rather what you want to keep. And finally, the KonMari method is not about becoming a minimalist. There have been a lot of memes going around on Facebook and Instagram and pretty much any social media site that you could possibly imagine. And one of the ones I saw on Instagram said something about 17 pairs of black leggings do spark joy for me, Marie Kondo. And the funny thing is that Marie would then say then of course you have to keep them. You have no choice but to keep them. So yes, you might become a little bit more minimal in certain areas of your life, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to become a minimalist. That's not what Marie Kondo's method is about. So now let's talk about the pros and cons for the TV show and each of the books, and we'll do them in order. First off, the TV show. The pros for the TV show are, obviously, it's entirely inspiring. It is so inspiring to watch other people clean out their houses, my sister's texting me, and get their lives in order. The other thing that the TV show is really good for is getting to know Marie Kondo as a person. You get to know her personality and her infectious passion for tidying up. And now the cons for the TV show. The first is that you miss a lot of lessons when you're watching the TV show. If you just watch the TV show, you would think, okay, go through clothes, go through books, and husband takes the garage and wife takes the kitchen and that's it. That's kind of the impression that you get, but if you pay attention when you're watching the show, it tells you lesson one, close and then it might skip to lesson four so there's a lot of things that are missing in the show and the second thing that i think you miss out on in the show is kind of the point of the KonMari method. It's not just about keeping what sparks joy, although that is a big part of it. It's also about having this life transforming experience. And once you get down to only the things that spark joy in your life, your mindset is completely changed, which is why she claims you won't have a rebound. So those are the pros and the cons of the TV show. Next, let's get into the first book titled The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. I have three pros for this book. The first is that you get to know Marie's story. She talks about when she was five, enjoying tidying up through her experiences through high school and trying to tidy up her parents' house while living there with her brother and sister and her parents. So that's really fun. You kind of get to know the background of who she is and where she came from. The second benefit to having this book is that you get all of the steps, all of the lessons. So unlike the TV show where you're only getting lesson one, lesson five, lesson whatever, you actually get all of the different steps in the book. And of course, you also get to know what the point is to have that complete mindset by only being surrounded by things that bring you joy. Now let's talk about the cons for this book. First of all, I think there are some things that get lost in translation, both literal translation from Japanese to English and also cultural translation from Japan to America. And because of that, I think that we as Americans don't always understand the respecting of our things and the spirit of a house. Things like that can definitely get lost in translation. And going along with that is my second con, which is that we don't really get to know Marie through the book. And I think, again, that's because of translation. So now let's go ahead and talk about her second book, which is titled Spark Joy. The pros for this book are there are illustrations. So if you've been struggling with how to fold your clothes or whatever it is, there are illustrations in here, which is fantastic. I am a picture learner all the way. And the other pro that I found for this book 
was that it is very detailed in its step-by-step -step nature. Let me find for you the pages that talk about the process in which you are to declutter. So here in the table of contents, you can see that it says tidying clothes and then it breaks it down category by category. And the same thing is true for books and papers and of course, kumono. So the cons for this book, I would say, are you get less of Marie's story in here and it's less inspiring. The TV show is incredibly inspirational, whereas this is much more of a how-to manual. And finally, I wanna to talk to you guys about my own personal experience with the KonMari method. Now, I read the first book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, back when it was, I think, first translated, back when it was first popular anyway, in about 2016, maybe? It was a few years ago, and I, loved it. I did not, however, go through my entire house category by category. And I think that is a fatal mistake because the whole point for Marie Kondo is that you're supposed to go category by category and get through your entire house in one go. And please listen to me on this one, okay? Oh, I'm so passionate about this point. In one go does not mean it's going to take you a day. It does not even mean it's gonna take you a weekend. In her book, she said it can take up to six months to get through your entire house. And I think the reason that I'm so passionate about this is I've seen so many YouTubers now talking about how I'm going through my closet, Con Marie style. And no, you're not because you're not doing your whole house and that is entirely the point. Or you're making exceptions for yourself. Well, I'm not gonna bring it all out onto my bed. I'm not gonna bring everything out that's in my dressers just to put it all back. That's entirely the point is to see how much stuff you have in one category so that you do put it back one by one and you know that you enjoy each of those pieces. Okay, Whew. soapbox over. I do, however, think that because I read Marie Kondo a few years ago that I have far less stuff this time around to get rid of. And that is also another point that she makes. When she says this is gonna happen once in your lifetime and once you're done, you'll never have to do this again, she's not talking about that you'll never have to get rid of stuff again. She's not saying you're not gonna go through your collection. She herself says in her books, please read the books, that she herself twice a year goes through her stuff and gets rid of some things. So what she is saying is that this will not be a gigantic project that you're going to have to completely do over and over and over again. So that was my experience the first time around. This time around, I watched the TV show, I reread The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, and I bought and read Spark Joy. And so this time around, with Spark Joy as my guide, I have gone through category by category by category. Now I have not gotten rid of my children's things or my husband's things because I just don't feel like it's my place to go through that. Now I've gotten rid of some of the kids' toys, the stuff that's broken or I know that they never play with, but for the most part, I did not touch their stuff. But I have gone through my own closet, my own books, my own papers, and the family Komono. There are a few categories that I still have to go through. I have to go through all of my sentimental stuff, which is very hard to do, so I need the space and time to do that. I can't just do that while the kids are watching TV. I need to be able to actually have the freedom of mind to concentrate, and I also have not gone through the things that are in the garage or in the basement yet. And again, part of that is because I have little kids, so there are a few small categories that I haven't done yet, but I am working through and I'm excited, so excited to finish. As for the change of mindset, it is life-changing. It is, and not in a really <laughs> drastic, weird kind of way, but definitely the first time I went through, that's why the second time when I've gone through, I have had so much less stuff to get rid of because I've already gone through that big purge for a lot of the things that we own. And even now that I'm taking it a little more seriously and actually going through piece by piece and category by category, I'm finding that my mindset has changed. I love to shop, guys. I love to shop. It makes me happy. It's one of my joys in life is to go shopping. However, I'm finding that I'm doing a lot more window shopping and a lot less actual purchasing of things because 
I know what I already have at home. I know what role each of my pairs of shoes is fulfilling and I know which jackets I have at home. So in that sense, it has changed me. It's changed what I decide to bring into my home. So that is my two cents on the life-changing magic of tidying up and Marie Kondo, the adorable tidying fairy. Ching! But I want to know, have you guys had any experience with Marie Kondo's system? Have you tried it at all? Uh, what exceptions did you make for yourself? Did you not take everything out of your closet like you were supposed to? Inquiring minds want to know. I'd love to get a discussion going down in the comments section. So please leave your thoughts and experiences down below or just drop by and say hi. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up to let YouTube know that you enjoy home videos and I will talk to you next time. Bye. New videos every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. In the meantime, check these out and follow me across social media.